Next up, Jody. Jody Arias in chains. And who was she staring down in court? Guess what? I'm going to bring that person that she was given the stink eye to there. That person will be with us exclusively. So what's going to happen to her? I don't think she's... I hope she's not that cold-blooded. So what happens if she's found guilty? Well, then she'll be sentenced for however long they decide. For the rest of her life, probably. I don't know. That's not up to me. And back with my co-host, Samantha Shocker. That was a rather clairvoyant statement on Jody's mom's part, asking about her daughter's fate back in 2008. Today's hearing lasted a mere 43 seconds and ended as abruptly which, uh, with as much of a big question mark. Here's a quick clip. The court is deferring ruling on the motion to continue, resetting this matter to July 18th at 8.30 a.m., vacating the current trial date of July 18th, Lauren Lake and Jenny Hutt are back joining us as well. Two of Jody's jurors, Tara Kelly, and number she was number 17, and alternate, and Diane Schwartz, juror number seven. They were both in court today. Now, but first, uh, quickly out to Shanna Hogan for the latest. Shanna, what do you got? Oh, was Shanna there? Not there. Okay, I'm going to go to you guys. Tara, I believe when Jody came out in all that prison garb, uh, Jody caught your eye, is that right? That's correct. What happened? Uh, we actually were seated one row behind the family of Jody, so it was her mother and two other people that were with her. Um, Travis's aunt had went to the back with Juan Martinez, so I, I went and sat in her seat real quick to talk to some of the friends that were over there. And as Jody started coming back in from Judge's Chambers, I realized she was coming in, so I stood up to walk over to my seat. And about halfway through when she was walking, she realized I was there and we locked eyes and she continued to stare at me until I was able to go sit down and join the other two jurors, who then she looked at them as well. Wow, creepy. And creepy, yeah. And uh, Diane, was it the usual emptiness that so many of the Travis's friends had described or was there something a little more hostile there? I felt a little bit more hostility, but there was a real emptiness. Um, I mentioned to Tara later, did you see how black her eyes were? Um, extremely black, but she definitely looked at all three jurors. Um, it was very apparent. Mm -hmm. Now, as you look at this video, when she goes around, you're gonna see the viewers how, how deeply, how, how they've got her like in shackles and she's got a big leather belt around her. Is, it, is that, do we have other footage of this or is this the only footage we have of her? You can see, you can, under that uh, blue bar, you can see she has this huge leather bar around her waist and her hands are, are shackled to the bar. I mean, does she need Lauren? Does she need, is she dangerous that way that she needs that kind of shackling? Well, Dr. Drew, absolutely, and not just the danger factor, the flight risk factor as well. I mean, she could potentially plan an escape. This girl has been known to be capable of a lot of things and is not trustworthy. Also, she's been on suicide watch, so she could potentially harm herself or someone else. She's also one of the most hated women in America. So this is in the interest of the public and also the defendant. Jenny, you got something to say? I Sorry, I, I, I'd like to say something. What happened to the woman yep. at, who at her allocution was saying that she was sorry and for what she had done or what she had caused or the, the hurt she'd caused to the Alexander family? You know, Jenny? That girl was Jenny, angry. You, you, yeah, you, may be, you may be shocked to know this, this Jody Arias woman. <laughs> she lies and distorts things. She, I know. She like, serves no, whatever need she has. <laughs> it's but it's she gave very up the shocking, acting. I know, to hear that. But, but, but if she Drew, needs it to go, yeah. She gave up the act, I feel like, in that yeah. 43 seconds, she was angry. She was nasty. She gave up the act. We saw the true Jody Arias. To... Yeah. 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 Diane, Definitely. tell us about the gesture that Travis's aunt made for you guys. It was very, very nice. Um, we were, the bailiff had seated us um, in the row that we were sitting in on the defendant's side. And... Um, Travis's aunt came over and put her arms around me and she said, you know, you can come over and sit with the family and we'd love to have you over there. And then she wow. gave me a great big hug and she said, thank you for your service. And, you know, that was that was worth being there today for that. It, it, that was just That's a real nice. heartwarming feeling. That's nice. That is nice. That's nice because you guys, I know, all had a lot of... Uh, 
ambivalence that you had let the family down. Lauren, I want to ask you something. Um, what do you think the defense attorneys felt when they took a look at our jurors? What would you, if you were the defense attorney, Lauren, how would you behave? And then we'll hear what they saw. Well, you know, if I saw the jurors there and I'm sitting in the defense position, of course, you know that these people are very attached to this case and you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, this isn't looking good for my defendant. Is it going to throw my client off? Is it going to some way affect the outcome? But at the end of the day, the defense walked away today with a little more time. And ladies, Tara, what did you see when Jody's lawyer saw you? Well, we actually had seen Kirk Nurmi standing with his security a uh, female that was with him before the courtroom even opened and as soon as he saw us he pretty much looked disgusted seeing us there. Diane you had the same feeling? Yeah he, he I didn't really um, look at him or try to interact with him at all I just I felt that I wasn't there to watch him and and so I really didn't interact with him at all. And before we wrap this up Sam did you have something you wanted to yeah, say? Really yeah really quickly I wanted to know when you were sitting with the Alexander family how did they appear how are they holding up mm. did you talk to them? We actually went and had breakfast with his aunt and some of their friends. Wow. And, nice. you know, they're holding up. You know, it, it's, it's frustrating that it's being delayed again for the hearing. But, you know, they're, they're troopers. They're hanging in there. I Definitely. can't resist. I, I felt the same way. Sa any word on how Samantha's doing? The other I know that they yours. said that they're definitely keeping track of, you know, keeping her, you know, in, they're trying to help her out as much as possible, but it seems like the family is just trying to move on in their normal lives until, you know, the next hearing and everything starts again. Great. Mm. Ladies, as always, we really appreciate you being here, and uh, thank you to the panel.